Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Dare to Be Great 2. This is the official first day of Dare to Be Great. Yesterday was pre-con day. We had a full boat, and it was amazing. Such excellent sessions that were going on, and this day is going to be just as great. So we are starting off today with a diamond sponsored speaker of Rapid Deploy, and it's going to be uh, Ryan Hart Eckel. He is the chief operating officer with Rapid Deploy, and his session today is going to be the future of 911 Unified Critical Response. Take it away, my friend. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, awesome to be here. Welcome, everybody, to Dare to Be Great 2. Um, officially, the first day. It's quite an honor to kick this off with my friend Ricardo. Um, very uh, proud of everything you've put together here and uh, you know big big supporter of everything you do whether that's the podcast or you know the conference or you know basically your your own media company that promotes Navo one telecommunicators and the I'm Navo one movement so Ricardo it's it's awesome to be here and thanks for putting this together I know it means a lot to a lot of people who cannot travel at the moment and you know I still have a desire to learn and collaborate and and you know advance the industry so Thank you so much for for having me here. Uh, we're we're a proud supporter as as Rapid Deploy. We're a proud supporter of of everything you do, and uh, and really share the appreciation for Nama One Telecommunicator that that you are a champion for. And so I want to start today just by introducing myself, and then maybe share a little introduction on my own flavor of Nama One appreciation. So a little bit about myself, uh, as Ricardo said, I'm the CEO here at Rapid Deploy. Um, have been in the industry before at a different company where you know many of you might have met me, um, but been here for for two years and uh, really trying to move the industry forward in terms of technology and making sure that the most advanced technology is available to agencies of all sizes, of all geographies, of all budgets. Uh, really trying to to move the ball uh, forward. Um, so now, uh, quickly about uh, a quick note about my appreciation for Number One. Um, I used to be a paramedic out in the field. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time in dispatch. Uh, you know, the dispatch floor was uh, basically years I've been traveling the country and visiting literally hundreds of, of PSAPs and had a chance to meet many of you in person and, you know, plug in the headset and get a sense of, of what your day is like. And I've always been impressed by the intensity and the stress and you know the, the calm within the chaos. Um, but today I want to share maybe a different flavor of appreciation. Um, until a couple of weeks ago, I had never uh, had to call Namo one for myself. You know, I was always on the uh, on the other side of, of the equation, you know, providing help or working with the people who are answering the call. Um, so if anybody is here from the Austin, uh, Texas CTECC or Austin Travis uh, um, Fire uh, or EMS, I really appreciate everything you do. Uh, my wife had to call um, a couple of weeks ago. I got myself trapped in a garage door uh, spring, and uh, I, I needed a lot of help to get myself out of there and treat a couple of smaller injuries. So for everybody who was involved in that a couple of weeks ago, um, thank you very much. You guys did a great job. Uh, and, and that's, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to hear a number one call from the other side of the uh, fence when when you're trapped and you can't get out and you need somebody to, you know, come quickly. So really appreciate the, the call and the, the, the voice in the call. So uh, now back to the original um, plan for the presentation. Um, so as a diamond sponsor uh, of Within the Trenches and Dare to be Great, we obviously fully support uh, Ricardo's drive to build the next generation of number one leaders. And we understand that a lot of the challenges that uh, happen in the comm center are leadership challenges. And I know that a lot of the keynote speakers and presenters this week are, you know, very respected leaders and, you know, the next generation of people who really move this industry forward. And I'm really excited about some of these sessions. What I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the technology that powers leadership. Because really, to, to move the industry forward, you need not just leadership, you also need the technology to support you. And uh, the challenge is we still live in a very voice-centric world where 911 essentially is you know, a, a phone service where you answer phone calls, so everything's very voice-centric on that side. And then you radio out to your responders, so everything's very voice-centric on that end too. And in the middle sits a human who you know, gets crushed from both sides, you know, deals with a lot of stress, deals with very uns uncertain outcomes and 
you know, it's, it's often underappreciated and, 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 and not respected enough. So we want to get to a place where we can make it data centric, where it's data coming in and data you know, coming out and the humans sitting under the headset are empowered to, to really be their best and provide the technology so that every 911 center, every agency, regardless of size, geography or budget, has access to the data they need in the moments when it matters the most. That's really what we're trying to do. So let's talk about what that would look like if every everyone could use the same technology in 911 that we use in in our smartphones, you know, every, every day. Uh, it's not just about voice, right? We have text, we have video, and we really have data flowing through from all sorts of devices, from all sorts of sources, and really getting to a place where you have situational awareness that keeps your responders safe, that you know makes it easier to triage what's going on on scene, and ultimately. Uh, reduces response times. We also recognize that a lot of people are anxious about you know too much data going in and too much data going out and the stress it puts uh, on the on the call taker or dispatcher. And you know, as as somebody who spent a lot of time in in dispatch centers, it's kind of scary when you look at these consoles and there's four, five, six, seven screens, and they're all made by different you know vendors and. They don't talk to each other, right? Uh, at best, there's a small serial cable that connects one with the other, but really you don't have data flowing. So what we're trying to do, what we're building here at Rapid Deploy is a, an ecosystem that integrates data across the entire emergency response workflow from the call taker to the dispatcher out to the responder uh, in, in, in one unified uh, way. And that's really the promise of unified critical response, which is the title of today's presentation. It's uh, an attempt to integrate the user experience and not just have a lot of data flowing and a lot of data coming in and out, but have a way for telecommunicators to be their best and to be effective and efficient and have a data-driven response that, uh, that really transforms emergency response. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to empower the telecommunicator and really enable them to be the best version of themselves. Um, what that does is not just improving response times, not just improving situational awareness, it also makes it easier to use, it makes it easier to train, and it makes it easier as a result to retain staff and make sure that all your seats are filled. Uh, we know that the staffing uh, issue is, is a big topic for all of you. So this is how you tr transform uh, 911 emergency communications. Um, in order to build this um, ecosystem, uh, in order to build unified critical response, we need to build the foundation of a partner ecosystem where it's not just rapid deploy, it's a lot of companies around us that work with us together. And uh, today I'm proud to announce a, a few new partners, um, you know, five large and very influential technology companies um, that help us build this ecosystem. Um, and to set the stage, I want to start with uh, what, uh, you know, what every number one call starts uh, like today. So the, the most important question that you will ask a number one caller is, what's the location of your emergency? Or what's the address of your emergency? And uh, you know, or any variation uh, thereof. This is how every call starts, and this is the first question that needs to be answered before any uh, response can get started. So, what if you already knew where the caller was located before your phone even rings, before you even pick up the phone? And this is this is what I'm going to talk about today. This is possible, and this is in place already. We have an ability to get location information faster and more accurate than ever before. We're getting the location now directly from the source, from Apple and from Google, uh, which means we're able to display locations on a 911 map before the call even rings, and then intelligently correlate it with the data from the 911 phone system, so that whoever answers the call has the data immediately, you know, automatically zoomed in, so that they have the information they need, what they want. There's no need to switch between different screens. There's no need to manually enter any information. Everything's already integrated in as part of unified critical response. So with Apple, we uh, integrate uh, EED. It's called enhanced emergency data, which is a secure and encrypted way of transmitting location information directly from the smartphone to uh, a 911 map in the communication center. Um, 
and this enhances user privacy and, and, and security and makes the location available in a reliable and robust and very fast fashion. And again, sometimes even before the phone even rings, because the data that travels across a modern data path uh, is, is obviously more robust and faster than you know, all the legacy call routing. And you know, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more later. We also get location data directly from Google from the Android Emergency Location Service. Um, the data comes directly from the smartphones. It doesn't pass uh, any Google servers, so the user privacy is, uh, is guaranteed. And we are able to display locations on the map uh, very quickly, often before the call rings. Both of those, uh, Apple and Google, also offer uh, uh, an, some degree of additional data. So Apple now lets users opt into sharing their medical ID with emergency responders. Um, what that means is uh, the responders arrive more informed and have more context for the information uh, for the patient that they're about to treat. Uh, for Google, we have an ability to display locations. Um, um, languages of the caller. So if a caller has set their smartphone to a different language, we'll be able to know which language they speak. Um, another, um, uh, another point I want to point out is uh, Apple also has some very exciting additional forms of additional data where they can provide additional location context. But I'll talk about that in just a second. Now let's talk through a few things that we can do now that we're integrated with Apple and Google directly rather than going through a middleman. Um, we're able to show you locations of callers before the call is even received in the PSAP. So if there's a large event and you have a lot of people calling at the same time, or if you just have a busy queue and you haven't gotten to them, you can already start to see where the next number one call is coming in. We don't have to wait for your phone system to tell us which call you're handling. We already see for all the locations in your service area who's calling you. So if you're handling a large event and you see that there's a bunch of other people calling, you'll be able to see where these calls are coming from and who's handling them. So this makes it a lot easier to coordinate. The other uh, thing we can do, which I'm very excited about, is we're able to see calls that should have been routed to your uh, to your PSAP, but they were routed to a different agency, whether that's a neighbor or whether that's Hyper Patrol or whether it wasn't routed you know, anywhere for, for some failure, we're able to tell you which calls happen in your service area and will immediately tell you who answered the call. So if you're sitting in a local center in California, for instance, and you see a bunch of calls coming in from the area um, you know, close to the freeway, you might want to know what's going on there. You might want to have awareness that there's some event happening there where 20, 30, 40 people are calling number one um, before you get the call from Hyper Patrol that somebody uh, you know, needs assistance there. Um, so we'll be able to tell you that, um, which is very, excited, uh, very exciting in terms of correlating information from different sources. And then last but not least, additional data. Um, this is additional data from the world's most trusted sources, right? This is not some, you know, dinky app that people can sign up for, or you know, a, a startup that is trying to do something. This is data that is from Apple and Google, so it's very trustworthy and it's available for a large number of devices, where you'll be able to see things like medical ID, emergency contacts, language, etc., and also a new concept from Apple that they've just recently started to talk about which is uh, the concept of emergency response areas, where uh, if a caller is likely located close to their home or close to their work location, and the phone has reasonable certainty that they're actually there, we'll be able to tell you the, the civic address and you know, more information about that location as well. So um, there's a new white paper that just came out uh, from Apple um, earlier this week, which explains this in a lot more detail, but this is probably too, too much in the weeds for today's session. Um, but location is only the beginning, right? Uh, we, we all know the call starts with location, but once you validated the location, once you know what's going on, very quickly, um, you know, you go to uh, other questions and there's a lot more that you need to handle. So from our point of view, this is only the beginning, right? Displaying real-time locations uh, before a call rings, correlating the location with call taker positions, you know, the awareness around calls that are happening in your service area and displaying the additional data. That's what we have in place today. 
Uh, and that's, uh, I would say, the, the gold standard of Namumon location mapping as it stands in 2020. But we're not going to stop here. We're going to go into the future where we display emergency requests from different sources, from different channels, from, from devices, from, from all sorts of uh, you know, ways that we didn't think was possible. So now let's look at uh, our unified critical response system again and see what else we have in store for you that goes above and beyond what, uh, what's possible today. So next, we're going to talk about EDT, OnStar, and Rave mobile safety. So with EDT, we will have an ability to have a rich data transfer for alarm calls, which means rather than having uh, information verbally relayed to you from an alarm company dispatcher, who, um, you know, there's often, you know, delays or misunderstandings or, you know, some kind of friction in that handover process. Uh, ADT is providing data to us very, in a very fast and, and rich and, and reliable fashion, which means you can process call, calls faster. You have all the context you need and, uh, you know, we can get those call, calls out faster and make the, the center more efficient. Um, OnStar, something I'm super excited about, will be able to display crash data and correlate it with number one calls. So when an answer advisor hands you a, a call, when they call in, immediately on your screen, you will have all the information about the, the vehicle, make and model, you have you know, airbag deployments, crash indicators, all of that information right on your screen so that you have an ability to know what's going on on the scene. Uh, situational awareness for vehicle telematics from, from OnStar. Uh, which is the leading provider in this space. And then uh, Rave, another partner that we just announced, um, also agreed on a shared roadmap to integrate uh, emergency profile information, their smart 911 uh, data, as well as their IoT panic button and, and other things that we're working together with the objective of making communities safer and, and more connected. And what's interesting about all of these partners, whether that's Apple, Google, OnStar, ADT, Rave, is that we serve public safety. We, you know, we integrate these data sources um, not because we we have, you know, a, a business interest in charging them. We do not charge these integration partners or upstream data partners. We will get all the data that enhances public safety, and we will make it available to our public safety customers without any interface fee. So our business model is to uh, serve public safety, not a a barrier to adoption for new data sources. Then um, I want to highlight a few additional partners that we've been working with for years, but uh, we've enhanced our partnership. So Geocom, um, Esri, and Priority Dispatch. So Geocom is our data for is our partner for GIS data hosting, and we are uh, enhancing our partnership for indoor mapping, where we will be able to make very rich indoor maps available within our mapping products so that you can combine the accurate location information from Apple and Google together with indoor maps so that you know exactly where the caller is calling from. Uh, Esri, also we have a shared commitment on a roadmap to bring the newest GIS technology into our platform. We already a Esri partner and we have you know, the ability to pull in uh, the jurisdictional data and the authoritative GIS data from your, uh, your county and city GIS servers. That's already in place, but we're deepening that partnership. We're really doubling down on, on, on Esri as our GIS technology partner. And then Priority Dispatch, many of you are uh, familiar with the ProQA protocols um, for triaging calls. Um, we're deepening our partnership there and we'll be displaying the, the Priority Dispatch key questions and, and and interaction inside of our product so that it doesn't have to be an integration it can be much more seamless so really what we're trying to build here is an opportunity to be your best for every number one call that you receive in your center 240 million opportunities to to be your best um, but this is not the end there's always more there's always more than we can do so we also want to talk about our lightning partnership, uh, our lightner, lightning partner program, where we have some new partners and some existing partners that really share our vision of secure and modern interfaces. And the lightning partners are more than just interfaces. There's a, there's a commitment to a joint roadmap, and there is a, a really a shared philosophy of using cloud native interfaces to, to build the emergency response system of the future. 
Um, so there's a few here I want to point out. Um, Climacell is, uh, is a new partner of ours that has hyper accurate weather forecasts and really a weather intelligence platform that, that helps us get, a, uh, get um, situational awareness on a very localized level. Uh, Archer, uh, first response systems, is a super promising drone company that deploys EEDs and Narcan kits without uh, having to fly line of sight. So this is super exciting. You can basically launch a drone from inside of your 911 map and you don't need a pilot. All the, all the flight plans are already mapped out ahead of time and they automatically check uh, whether the conditions are right and you can launch a drone, send, drop an EED on site uh, without having to have a pilot fly line of sight. So that's super exciting. Um, Priority Dispatch already talked about what three words is another very interesting uh, you know, mapping and addressing scheme, where especially in areas where there's not a lot of sophisticated addressing, uh, you can map out the world in, in you know, 10 by 10 uh, foot squares. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of success in that in rural areas, like uh, uh, you know, in the desert in Arizona, for instance. Um, uh, Pulse Point, a lot of you are familiar with, um, you know, AED locations and citizen engagement around getting uh, responses faster to uh, CPR um, cases. Um, and uh, then another uh, super interesting partner, Niche. Uh, Niche is a, a law enforcement RMS that we've been working with. Super excited about bringing that to our customers uh, along with our existing uh, partner, Optimo. Um, and then um, another one here that is new, uh, Trainfo is another one that I'm super excited about out of personal experience. A lot of time as a responder, you get stuck on the wrong side of the train tracks and you have to wait for uh, that, that long freight train to pass. Trainfo provides real-time situational awareness around uh, the status and um, um, you know, traffic of, of trains coming through your jurisdiction. So if you use that for routing responders, if you use that for dispatching decisions, you'll be able to reduce response times even further. And all of these partners um, really share our commitment to uh, the cloud and to something that's secure and modern and is easy to deploy and most importantly, affordable to agencies of all sizes. We really believe in the democratization of public safety where there really shouldn't be a tier one CAD for a big city and then you know pen and paper for a small agency in the middle of nowhere. Um, number one is a universal service that we all rely on. And we really need to work together to provide the same sophisticated 911 uh, technology uh, anywhere you go, regardless of geography, size, or, 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 or budget. So that's really um, the promise of unified critical response, right? Uh, we we um, built this ecosystem that is integrated and that uh, allows telecommunicators uh, to, to be their best. So that was a quick teaser. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of follow-up questions, a lot of thoughts on how all of this works. Um, I can point you to another session that will start right after the break, where my colleague Brooks Shannon will dive deeper into um, our mapping solution, where we show some of the stuff that I teased here with, with Apple and Google. Uh, my colleague Brooks, who probably many of you know from his many years in the industry and you know, involvement in, in Nina and you know, standards development. He will talk about that a little bit more. So Brooks Shannon at 8.45 Eastern. Um, but also, if you have any questions about anything I said, my email address is right here. I, I, I got a short one to make it easier for you so that you don't have to try uh, nailing my spelling. Just r at rapiddeploy.com. Just shoot me a note uh, or visit rapiddeploy.com. Uh, we have all sorts of ways you can get in touch with us there. Um, really pumped about Dare to be Great. I know there's a lot of other great sessions coming up um, today and tomorrow and over the course of the week. Um, so this is pretty much it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. I will stop sharing now and we will see if there's any uh, questions or comments from Ricardo. Uh, where do we take it from here? All right, man. Thank you so much for kicking off uh, day one here for Dare to be Great. You're you, you should we we're right next to each other now side by side on the screen and 
if you if you look to the side, we've got a, a lot of people here talking and joining in and everything. And I made sure to put your email address there in the comments as well for any other information that people might need. Once again, you know, make sure to check out uh, um, here at 8:45 a.m. There's going to be um, three uh, sessions going on at the same time. So uh, one thing I want to message here or uh, let everyone know here is that um, if you look in the upper left hand corner. That's where you'll see the schedule. Make sure to click on that. Once you click on that, you'll see all of the sessions that are listed and uh, you'll be able to choose which session you want to go to. There's three diamond sponsors that are going to be starting at 8.45 a.m. and they're going to be going on for an hour. And as uh, uh, Ryan Hart had said, uh, Brooks, their VP of GIS, is going to be doing an excellent session on a uh, feature of uh, GIS mapping and such. So there's a lot more information that's going to go on there. And uh, yeah, this this the continuation of this day, this first half of the day is going to be the vendor hall sessions and you'll have choices to go through with each tier that are going on for each group. And then we will be um, kicking it off uh, conference sessions with uh, Karima Holmes out of um, the Office of Unified Communications out of DC 911 and then Rosa Ramos and then uh, Luz Martinez are gonna go from there. So thank you, Reinhardt, once again, very much that was excellent the information just everything that you guys are doing and the announcements it's 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 awesome man and, and thank you for supporting um for for so much and so long thank you of course and uh you know thanks ricardo for the great show you're putting up here i really appreciate everything you do for the industry i appreciate it man i will see all of you here in a moment in the different sessions usually I bring everyone to the next session. This one today and tomorrow during the vendor hall sessions is where each of you will be able to choose the sessions that you want to go to. So once again, make sure to remember to go to the schedule, click on it, bring and it'll drop down and then choose the different sessions that are there. Um, choose, a lot Brooks. Of people here, choose Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people here are saying, you know, great presentation and I'd love to see where we are headed. So excellent work. Hats off to Rapid Deploy. Thank you once again. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one.